I'm here to take the model we created together and bring it to this level in just 3 steps. And I've made a simple pipeline for you, one that's not confusing and won't take too much of your time. After watching this video, texturing will become much easier to understand, and you'll be able to handle your own models with confidence. So let's jump into the first step. In the first step, you need to define the materials, as well as the correct colors and roughness values, to determine which object belongs to which material type. What I mean is, if one object is supposed to be metal and another one leather you should define them by adjusting the roughness and metallic values and then assign them to the right objects the whole purpose of this step is to have an overall view of the material so we can understand what combination will be used in the final result you can create a separate folder for each material such as fabric metal or leather and assign a different color to identify them this becomes very helpful when you're working on a full character with many objects so at this stage you don't need any other details Another benefit of this workflow is that once you add the final details later, you can simply copy them for similar materials. And that's why this organization is essential. Step 2 is define the colors and build a strong base variation using the baked maps, ambient occlusion, and curvature. These maps help you to create a solid foundation of details without manual work, so the later details can show more clearly. For example, here I use the ambient occlusion mask, then invert it with a level adjustment so the areas with more occlusion become darker and had less roughness. You can copy this setup for fabric materials or anything else you have. Adjust the AO color according to the object's base color and reduce the roughness to achieve an interesting breakdown at the start. The main goal of this step is to use the baked maps to create a strong breakdown for the base color before starting the details. The next layer you can use is a fill layer with the curvature map. If you add a level adjustment, you can make the details really sharp. You can also invert it which gives an incredibly strong effect for detailing and allows you to make the details pop. Then I add a blur filter to soften the lines. And after that, I add a paint layer, set the multiply mode, and unmask the entire object, so effect is completely removed. Now you can start painting with a dirt brush on the edges, or anywhere you want a different color compared to the rest of the objects. The reason I added the blue filter earlier was exactly for this, because I didn't want the detail to be sharp at this stage. Here we only need soft color variations. Of course, you can go much deeper, but I'm just showing you the general pipeline, and the rest depends on your creativity and style. You can also add roughness to this layer and lower it, so the breakdown happens in the roughness channel as well. I should also mention that if you have an ID map like I do for stitches or anything else, you can now create a simple color layer for them and assign it. In the next part, I create a new layer using this map. You can scale it up to get more quality and details, but make sure to set the UV mode to true planar so your UV seams don't become visible. I'm actually using this layer as a second layer of the leather, I mean the glossy brown surface, and for that we need to create its mask first. When you stack several different layers or textures on top of each other in one material, set the blend mode to a screen so you can see the combined effect. And finally, I put them all inside the folder and give it a new mask using ambient occlusion layer to filter only the areas I want. In fact, I want the areas without much ambient occlusion, flat surfaces to be covered with this glossy brown leather so you don't need to invert the mask. I want the recessed areas to keep the dry look from step 1 while the upper surface get this shiny brown leather layer. I strongly recommend giving the second layer a strong roughness value so you can really feel the difference. Also it's better to press C to view the roughness channel directly and see the effect. And keep in mind, different lights and environments have a big impact on the model so it can be hard to involve it correctly. Always use the base color or roughness channel to see the effects. Now I move on to the fabric material. First using the color ID map baked from the patterns I painted in ZBrush. I assign separate colors. Then I copy the layers we created earlier for the leather material and reuse them here and I only need adjust the color and roughness. I want to filter the large folds using the AO map and make them slightly brighter. This creates a good sense of depth between the recessed and rised areas which ultimately helps the model present itself more completely. I reuse the same layer for the metal material as well, only changing the color and roughness to match better. And if you're curious about how this armor was made, in the previous video I created a full 10 minute tutorial on it, where I also shared all the alphas and textures for free, so make sure to check it out. 
Now we enter the final stage. After building the base color, we move on to adding fine noise to sharpen the model. First, I add a layer with a leather texture. I scale it down so it adds a lot of small details to the model and breaks the flatness by using the height channel. This map is already available in Substance. Then using ambient occlusion again, I mask the recessed area with a level adjustment and give them some heights. The purpose of this is to bring the fresh leather surface above the first one, simulating scratches and worn areas, while also making the details sharper. Next, I add another map for the roughness, a random map with higher contrast and change its color to a lighter brown. You can also add another map on top of this one and use multiply to filter the lower map, preventing everything to looking too uniform. After that, I add a layer of scratches on top, scale it down to make them smaller and set the blending mode to a screen so it blends with the maps underneath. One important note, I constantly check both the roughness channel and the base color because lighting and environments can make it hard to involve the model and textures correctly. If you use a different environment, you will see how much it can misrepresent the textures. So always make sure to check the base color directly. Then I use the curvature map again for the recess areas, giving them a brighter color so they stand out more. To avoid uniformity, you should filter it with a dirt map set to multiply. And this time I create a new fill layer with the curvature map, but I only add it to the roughness channel while filtering out the recesses. The goal here is to create a breakdown in the roughness, separating the surface so the leather details become more visible. Finally, I add another AO map to mask the edges with a strong ambient occlusion, giving them darker colors and lower roughness. These separate overlapping objects and adds even more depth to the model. For the fabric, I use the default fabric material in Substance to separate its pattern. It can be a good starting point. I should mention that during the process, I constantly change the colors to see how the result evolves. What I usually do is, after finishing the texture, I always come back to it a few hours or even a day later and realize there is still room for improvement. Anyway, here I added some folds using Substance default map. I scale it and give it a bit of height to add more detail to the folds. The direction also matters, so you can rotate the map as needed. For the next layer, I add a dirt map with high contrast. If your UV seams are visible, make sure to set the projection mode to triplanar for the textures you add. Also pay attention to the scale so the texture doesn't repeat too much on the object, because that can make it look artificial, you know? I set the color closer to the dusty tune to give a layer of soft dirt. You can add roughness variation if you want, but usually dirt maps have roughness values close to zero. This part depends on your needs. For the following layer, I use the small spot patterns to create tiny wild dots with high contrast on the model. Reduce the scale so they become smaller. You don't need to make them completely white and generally try to keep the colors close to each other. I mean, unless you're creating something with very strong contrast like oil or similar materials or something like that. The whole process is basically a combination of dirt layers and different patterns to bring the work closer to the concept we have. I should add that realistic textures don't always have to look dirty. This goes back to your models or characters backstory. That's why I strongly recommend always following a clear concept and reference. In the final step for fabric, I filter the raised areas like large folds with brighter color and the recess or AO heavy areas with darker colors. This gives the model more depth and a stronger sense of volume. So under different lighting, it won't to look flat. Finally, we move on to the metal. I start with the base color combination. I create a curvature layer, sharpen it with levels, and use it to cover the recessed parts and seams. Then I add a bit of height to create a nice breakdown. You can also give it darker color with lower roughness to really make the details pop. The next layer is for the gold areas, especially the ornament parts I want to mask. I can use the AO map to mask the flat areas, then add a paint layer set to multiply, unmask the whole model, and manually paint only the parts you want. And finally, you can add roughness variation to make it, you know, feel more like real gold. In the next layer, I add a dirt map with very low roughness to simulate dust and grime. Again, I repeat, always check the base color and roughness channels directly, especially for metals, because they reflect a lot of light and it can be hard to judge the actual color. And I should say that texturing doesn't really have a fixed pipeline. Everyone does it in their own way. 
The order of layer doesn't matter. It's all about one thing, the final result. You need to match what you see in your reference. The rest is your creativity and experience in how you stack the layers to achieve the effect you want. And don't worry, after a few practice runs, you'll start to understand what works best to get the right result. This tutorial is just a guideline. You'll need to practice it yourself. If your target is a style as a style, you should definitely study references like Fortnite, Apex Legend, or Overwatch, because that's your final goal. But if you're aiming for realistic medieval style, you can look for God of War or other games in that genre. For every field, the best target exists. You just need to find them and use them as a reference. And just focus on recreating that level of quality and detail. The pipeline is the same. So this is the final result with some slight color adjustments and refinements. Always remember to come back and review your texture after a few hours because your eyes will get used to the colors and it will be harder to notice mistakes. So I hope this tutorial was useful for you and was able to resolve your problems. I will see you next week with a new challenge, so keep rocking until then.